Hello everyone, welcome to FitPage. My name is Yatish and today I have Sunil with us. We are here to take you through a lower body strength workout for runners. We have simple exercises listed for you today. Band clamps, mini band lateral walks, goblet squats, hamstring curls and three-way calf raises. So let's not waste time and get started with our workout today. For today's first exercise, that is band clamps, let's get a loop band and wrap it around both our legs. We need to pull the loop band slightly above our knees and place it securely. And from here, we start by raising the knee, keeping the feet joined together, activating the glutes. Now to avoid loss of contraction, you want to place your left hand on your hip to avoid it from rotating behind you. We are performing 10 repetitions. Great work, now let's perform the same movement on the right side. Again, let's remember the pointers. We need to place our left hand on the hip, avoiding it from rotating behind us. Breathe out, that is exhale, while you open up the knee and then slowly lower it back down. We perform these controlled movements for 10 repetitions. That was great work. Now let's take a short break and get back for set number two. Remember, it's important to focus on the exercise that you're performing and the muscle that you're trying to train. So the focus of band clamps is completely on the gluteal muscles. So make sure you're firing them up well while you open up your hip. And that is the primary movement of your glutes. That is abduction. Nice, let's switch side now and focus on the right side. Key pointers is to make sure that you do not rotate your hip either forward or backward. Now let's get ready for set number three. Now you gotta keep focus and make sure that you are still using your glutes to raise the knees away from the floor. That is the key. Keep focusing your mind back again to it, trying to move your knee away from the ground only by squeezing your glutes or activating the glute muscles. That's how we're gonna get them to fire up. That was great. We break for 30 seconds and we have our next exercise that is mini band lateral walks. This 30 seconds is a good time to sip on water and rehydrate yourself and also think about the movements that are coming up so that you're well prepared and you're ready to work hard on your core muscles.
For this exercise, we keep the loop bands in the same position as for band clamps, that is slightly above our knees. We do a mini squat by pushing the hips behind and bending at the knees slightly and get into our start position. From here, we begin to sidestep on the left side, maintaining our toes facing forward and also maintaining good tension around the loop band. We follow it with the right leg, however, only bringing it back to the hip width distance where we have constant tension on the loop band. And we perform 10 repetitions on each side, that is moving to the left and then returning back from the right side. Key pointers is to make sure that your feet is placed straight and you're walking sideways in a straight line. The other thing to maintain is the tension on the loop band throughout the movement even when you're bringing your leg back in, keeping it at that start position and then moving out with the opposite leg. That was great. Our next exercise is a goblet squat. For a goblet squat, you want to keep your feet wider than shoulder width apart. Goblet squats are basically performing front squats with a dumbbell. So, we hold one end of the dumbbell with both hands, raising both our arms in front of our chest in a prayer position. We now start by bending at the knee and pushing our hips behind us into our squat position. You want to drop your hips either as far as knee level or slightly below knee level to attain a good depth for your goblet squats. Let's prepare for set number two. For your breathing, you want to inhale on your way down into the squat, which is the eccentric phase and you want to exhale when you push off with your feet to come back up into the starting position. So maintaining that breathing rhythm will help you perform the squats much better. Let's begin set number three. Try to maintain balance by not lifting or falling forward or backward. Be very focused while dropping your hips lower to the floor, maintaining the back straight by rolling the shoulders back. Great work! Our next exercise in line is Swiss ball hamstring curl. This is a great exercise to work on your hamstrings. We are going to use a Swiss ball for resistance. Place both your feet on the exercise ball while lying on your back on the floor. Place your hands by your side for support. Now, you want your legs completely extended. Dig in to the exercise ball with your heel, raising your hip up. And now you can roll the ball towards you, coming up on the foot, placing the foot on the ball, and then roll it back to the start position with extended knees and hips still off the floor, slowly then lowering the hip back. We are performing knee flexion, which is the primary movement for hamstrings. 
we want to maintain good tension around the hamstrings. However, relaxing if you need to is always good. We exhale on the way in and inhale while we are extending our feet and rolling the ball away from us. Again, this movement requires a lot of stability since we have an unstable object to maneuver and help us strengthen our hamstring muscles. So make sure that you are in full control of the movement. Nice and slow, you do not want to rush into the movement. Let's begin set number three. Let's maintain the same posture and form throughout the movement. Stay in complete control by breathing in a nice and rhythmic manner. We know that we need to exhale while we pull the ball towards us and inhale while we are extending our foot and rolling the ball away. Good breathing helps stabilize the body. So always maintain good breathing during your movement. That was great. Now we have our last exercise, that's the three-way calf raises. If you need more rest, you can always pause and extend the rest for a few more seconds. However, try not to exceed your rest intervals more than a couple of minutes. For this exercise, we are going to try and rotate our foot into three different directions and perform calf raises, that is heel raises, for each of these positions in a rotational manner. So let's begin with placing our foot straight, toes pointed forward and raise the heel up and bring the entire weight of the body on the ball. Slowly lower the heels back down and now we rotate our foot inwards that is bringing our toes facing each other. Again, perform a heel raise or a calf raise, lower the heels down, and this time we're gonna rotate our foot outwards, making your toes face in a wide direction. Now you can perform these either on a flat surface or on an elevated surface to challenge yourself a little more. You can add weights if you would choose to if you want to look at strengthening or building more muscle mass into your thighs. This is a good way of attacking and challenging the calf in all different directions. Let's begin with set number two. Now remember, the heel up phase is the concentric phase is where we exhale and then we inhale while dropping the heel back to the floor, which is the eccentric phase of the exercise. You need to make sure that you keep a count of your rotations and don't miss any directions or get confused. So perform these movements slowly and in a controlled manner. 
Once again, I cannot emphasize enough on how important it is to have control of movements we perform. These exercises are helping us to get stronger for our day-to-day -day work or any sport that we are preparing for. Having control on these movements in controlled environment will help our muscle develop better and also prepare it while we transition to our sport or daily activity. Let's go for set number three. Remember, this is the last set for today's workout. Make sure that you are rotating your foot outwards, inwards, and keeping the toe facing straight as well. Pushing from the ball of the foot to raise your heel up, and then slowly lowering it back to the start position. Now, this is important because if you don't do that, you're not gonna activate your calf muscles or strengthen them. If you feel that your range of motion is less, you can always look at elevating your foot up on a surface or a step to get more range of motion, to get more engagement of your calf muscles. A simple exercises, correct form and technique can enhance the efficiency of that movement and also help you develop better muscle control. Great work. That brings us to the end of our workout. Thank you for joining in. This is me, Yatish, signing off.